Are we good? Are we chilling? How is your day going so far? How is your day going so far? Bad? Awful? Why? Why though? I don't know much about StarCraft, but a long time ago I saw this clip and today it's been embedded into my mind. If you saw this live. I don't... I never played StarCraft 1. I, we're talking about StarCraft 2. Uh, but have I seen this clip? He's getting the drone behind the zealot. Oh yeah. Uh, and yeah, someone linked this to me the, uh, when, when it happened. Oh, I can believe that, man. I've, I've, it, <laughs> He's just, playing with Oh my god! <laughs> Fucking YouTube fucking guy. Okay. Oh, I can believe that, man. I've, I've... Hey, Forsen, just oh, donating a couple dollars since you look more homeless than usual. Speaking of Boomer, I went to the corner grocery the other day and found out ads that Four Loco has started selling 14% seltzer water. As a Boomer, seltzer I miss old water. Four Loco. The fuck is seltzer water? I don't know what the fuck that is. And he got banned for that, I think. What the fuck? Wait. Welcome to Uganda. Thank you for the 10, Chad. And even when Nip were winning literally every tournament, they made only about 300k say. No, no, they didn't win. No, they didn't make 300k uh, sick. They made 300k sick each, right? Each one of them. Not the whole team. So there were tournaments for like 25k which is almost 300k each yeah i mean 300k yeah okay so nip nip uh won every tournament that's the thing with team games like counter-strike where you're five players in the team uh back in 2013 if you win a twenty-five thousand dollar major or whatever then uh you have to divide it by five and then also a little bit to the team, depending on the contract. I don't know what contract they had specifically, but 300k Swedish crowns for winning every tournament in a year. It's like 30k dollars right now. Um, it's, uh, it's it, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's before taxes. Mm. But that was 2013. But the price money hasn't really gone up too much, right? Honestly. In, in Counter-Strike, I'm not sure. There's a reason. Oh my God, no he's not. No he isn't. Oh my no, he God. Isn't. This is insane. This is the, oh my God. Why did he get banned for this? I think this is funny. Banned from Seed Story or banned from StarCraft? Like Koreans... Koreans rarely, rarely BM each other. Like very rarely in the Korean StarCraft 1 scene do they BM each other. Um, Sometimes they make like, they build like 20 pylons and something, you know, like 20 pylons in the middle of the screen. That's like their BM. But it's all, it's always like GL, GF, sorry, GLHF and, and, and GG or GG well played at the end of the game. Welcome to Uganda. In StarCraft, to Uganda. whoever is winning never writes gg before the the loser types out right because that shit is it's very frowned upon in the scene but it happened all the time in uh, the western scene in the western scene uh sweats on his says the nip scandal is bigger than you think august 9 this is very fresh 
All right, so you might have heard a few things recently about Ninjas in Pajamas, one of esports' most storied organizations. Things like allegations and evidence of corruption, tax evasion, failure to pay players prize money, and contract clauses the likes of which would make your fucking head spin. On top of sifting through all of the known details and breaking those down for you here today, the SCORE Esports spoke with five different players from multiple iterations of NIP rosters about their experiences with the organization. Here's what we learned. I don't think we have time to watch right. this right now. Uh, wait, let me pull up Microsoft real quick. I, I think it starts now. When is... Is it on Twitch? Uh, we can keep that. Um, Microsoft. Where is the... What is the channel name? It's not Gamescom. Xbox channel. Is it just twitch.tv slash xbox? Or is it? All right, yeah, we don't really have time to watch it right now, but I, I would like to watch that one. Cause I, I just saw what I saw on Twitter and what I know from things. Uh, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, scummy things going on in esports still. It was worse back in the day. Oh, can we not have this on, please? Jesus. It was worse back in the day, like back in 2012, uh, 11, 13 and stuff, where uh, like people would just not get paid. They would not get paid for their, for their shit. It was like a common thing. ESL didn't pay out price money for like <laughs> fucking seven you months to a year. You will see the opening ceremony which will show a special announcement for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I am so right for this game. Since buying Black Ops 4 was the biggest regret in my gaming career, even before the... Even before the NTX. Alright, uh, we have 20 minutes, so then I can watch the... the NIP scandal. Uh, Lee also done his three says Mountain Blade Banner Lord Pog. Yes, Mountain Blade. Coming up on the special sub only stream cup. You know it. Live more Tacaholic, Telonks, Toxi, Japanese character, Mishi Boy, Fortschutz, Linux, back to the roots, Narok and Sharkovich. Thank you, boys. All right, so you might have heard a few things recently about Ninjas in Pajamas, one of esports' most storied organizations. Things like allegations and evidence of corruption, tax evasion, failure to pay players prize money, and contract clauses the likes of which would make your fucking head spin. On top of sifting through all of the known details and breaking those down for you here today, the SCORE Esports spoke with five different players from multiple iterations of NIP rosters about their experiences all with the organization. Probably. Here's what we learned. Hey, Forsen, have you ever played Lobo Domi Corporation? It's a really good game that not many people know about. Here is a video if you want to check it out. We checked it out, but I don't, I don't know what the fuck you were supposed to do. It was, it was fucking weird. I don't know. We tried it like one stream and when it was newly released, but I just, I, I couldn't get into it. I couldn't get into it. Thanks anyway, Trump. All right, so before we actually get into the breakdown, we just need you to know that this is a really complicated situation. We're working with a variety of sources and tracking down multiple different leads. So there will be new videos in the future. Just keep it locked. Back on June 28th, Robin Fafleren Johansson, a member of one of the most accomplished CSGO rosters to ever exist, tweeted out that he was fed up about the way he was treated by the organization and he wanted to speak up about it, which he did in a July 24th interview with esports journalist Richard Lewis. I wanted to tell my story of like 2013, like even, even like NIP in general, I think, because I feel like there's so many unanswered questions from that time. See, back in 2012, 2013, NIP dominated the Counter-Strike landscape. One would assume they won a boatload of prize money. And with all their top tier sponsorships, I mean, they had a chocolate bar for Pete's sake. One and would assume McDonald's. that they were at the very least 
sponsorship. Com- oh shit, no. Not sponsorship, but they were not comfortable. Because around Christmas of 2013, the players were called to an emergency meeting with two members of NIP's upper management, Emil Heaton Christensen and Robert Himmler, and promptly told that then CEO Nicholas Fischer had fucked off to Thailand with all of the prize money from 2012 and 2013, and nobody had heard from him. But they won every to single Flaren, tournament this 2013, the case. and then the leaders say, have any proof of any of this, but the but manager like, says, it's just basically, they're just telling us all this. And at the same time, then they also then tell us that they took they the money, the leader, stuff. They took the money and fled to Thailand. Later, and I think this all is your price money maybe is Richard has. And I think he mentioned that in the interview with me too, that he said that, you know, when we then went back and looked, it was since Nicholas that, it took, that has taken the money to Thailand. It was Emil that had went to the US and spent it all. I think that story is a story that we haven't talked about yet um, because like the focus is like elsewhere at the moment. But, you know, I did mention in the Wait. interview with Richard was that I said, you know, I think that Emil got brainwashed and, you know, and what all that. To the hell but is... I never did I say that I think that he's innocent. <laughs> and oh, by the way, Nip didn't even pay taxes on the prize money that the players never even received. At that time in 2013, Nip was a subsidiary of a company called Stockholm Esports Production AB. This version of NIP is the first of two iterations of the organization. The players were told not to worry because despite not being paid any of the prize money from the previous year, Heaton and NIP management had secured new investors who theoretically would provide the funds to pay the taxes on the prize money that the players never saw. And according to Fuflaren, this is- Off topic, his his Esports Hall of Fame who else is in esports hall of fame? Like, is that me? I am. No. I was wondering if it was like a the thing, like in Magic told. the Gathering. There was just one little I, caveat. Oh, by the way, Armada from you Smash. Made, it hasn't been taxed. Everything is just hasn't been taxed for. It's Isn't the evasion is Mewtwo King it's a, guy? Yeah, it's not a joke. Hasn't he achieved the more than a model? becomes Shouldn't a very be big part of the decision was that if I get caught for tax evasion and I had, you know, and I have my bank statement here from 2013, I have 27,000 Swedish no. pounds on there. My taxes ended up being 69,500. I could have never paid it. And and I wasn't the only one. Like if anything on my bank account except for get right, I was probably the one with the most money. So like we were all in very bad shape. And then this happens. Hey, he's fled to Thailand. Your tax hasn't been paid for. All the price money is gone. But we have a new investor. And if you re-sign with us, we'll make sure that we pay your taxes if the tax office catches us. If IRS catches us, we will pay your tax money. That's actually tax evasion. Uh, if you, if you uh, only pay taxes when caught, that's uh, tax evasion. On top of that, according like to intentionally. the player, the players were told that they need to make up their mind really fast because otherwise this investor was just going to leave. Now I'm just a kid with a smile and a dream, but even I understand that it's not the responsibility of the players to retain potential investors. And the fact that they were allegedly pressured to make a quick decision is just fucking bonkers. But in one specific way, the badgering about resign or we'll lose the investors does make sense. There's obviously stuff that happens in the background here. Like NIP is not just a company, it's under Stockholm's esports production. It's just a side branch brand. So in order to claim NIP, you have to change the company from Stockholm esports production and they made the NIP company now. And this, I made a tweet, I think two weeks ago when I said, you know, the old sponsorships that they claim these are stories from back in the day because like the only thing they did was, you know, the NIP ninjas and pajamas stay the same, but it was the underneath the underlying thing that swapped. So now we have a completely new company. So, so the conversation was like, because they were doing that, they needed us to basically resign. Okay. So a few days later, the players were called back for another meeting this time to meet NIP's principal investor, a guy named Hisham Shaheen. All right, folks, this is where things get a little weird. To this day, Hisham has stated on the record that he had nothing to do with the day-to-day management of NIP until 2016, when he officially became the company's CEO. But according to internal emails Fuflaren provided to us, as well as an apparent breakdown of a NIP annual general meeting, not only was Hisham involved with calling weekly meetings and coordinating player contracts with the organization, but for some reason that we don't yet understand, 
Hisham had majority voting rights on the board. What this basically means is that at the end of the day, Hisham had final say on decisions relating to the company. And he had the ability to override anything that Heaton or the rest of NIP management wanted to do. So here it just says name, Hisham right? Then it says email. So these are the only two basically at the moment that has a say in NIP. And then on the right here it says uh, number of stocks. So here's also Emil's mistake. In Sweden, there's two separate stocks. There's one stock that's mostly for money and there's one stock that's for like power, which is why, you know, you see number of stocks. Hitcham only has 4K and Emil has 6K, but on the right here, it says number of votes. And that says 8K versus 6K. So here all of a sudden, yeah, it looks like Emil is majority stakeholder. But if you, if you actually look at the end of like the background of the company, that's not true. Emil here at this time. Wait, I didn't even know about this. Uh, what? What? The amount of shares represents your. What? These are correlated, no? Are they supposed to be correlated? There's a difference of, uh, between A and B stocks. Yes, but that's, I thought that was a public, if you went public. This is, this is a small company. This is not a public company. Or is this for smaller companies too? Like the LLC. This is LLC, this is an LLC company. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. It's rights to the company at this point, right? So now all of a sudden you, something yeah, you have day. the most stocks, but you're not majority holder anymore. And you don't, you, you don't have the final say. And this document, look at top 2014, 0410. He claims he had nothing to do with an IP until 2016. And now the same CSGO roster that had just completed one of the most impressive runs in the history of Counter-Strike were presented with contracts that include clauses that will shock you. Now, Fafler and sent us what appears to be the finalized contract, but what's important to note are the proposed contract clauses that the players rejected. Something that Richard Lewis went over in his original interview with Flaren. Any violation of any provisions in the All contract right, relax, means that they spam. can call forth a contractual penalty, aka funny. a fine, of 20,000 euros per individual violation. And the right of NIP to claim further punitive damages will remain unaffected. So essentially what they tried to slip in here was, if you violated any aspect of the contract, they could fine you 20,000 fucking euros. The other clause, which is just as absurd in my opinion, it says that the organization can set the status of the player to inactive at any time of their choosing. And if they do that, the player has no right to get any compensation, salary, prize money, anything from that day forth. And your contract duration will not be affected by this decision. So in other words, they can drop you at any time, you're still under contract, but they don't pay you a penny. And if you're thinking, thank God those clauses didn't make it into That's the contract. That's pretty much every uh, contract the CSGO contract team. ever though back then. Yeah, well, not really. This is Freeze's contract. And if you're a League of Legends fan, you might know that he played with NIP yeah. from June 2013 to September 2014. I'm gonna read off a few specific clauses from his contract that line up with what it still Richard is Lewis in, talked about in, with in some organizations, I guess. NIP is entitled to set the status of the player to inactive at any time. If this case occurs, the player has no right to claim any compensation from that day forth. The contract duration keeps unaffected in any case. And there's a second clause that's really important that does seem to match up with what Fafleren and Richard Lewis talked about. Any violations of the provisions in this article shall call forth a contractual penalty of 5,000 euros for each individual violation. The right of NIP to claim here. further damages will remain unaffected. At least it wasn't 20,000 euros. I guess. On top of that, Freeze's former teammate, Alex Ish, who provided us with Freeze's contract, had additional issues with NIP. At one point, like I was on the travel visa and you can be only in the, I think it's just like three out of six months or something like that. So basically your limited amount of time, you can be in the European Union. And then my visa was getting to a point where I'm not allowed to be in the country anymore. And then I came to them again and I talked to them like, is it fine? And they said, yeah, yeah. Everything is in process, but then eventually when we didn't get through to LCS, 
all of that got into a situation where they're like, eh, you know what, remember all those documents? I don't remember what exactly they said, but basically it all was like bullshit. And I was in a situation where my visa is expired. I can get like literally banned from going to Europe anymore. And basically when that happened, my wife was with me there too in the gaming house. My mm -hmm. son was left with my son's grandparents. I think her visa was fine. I'm not 100%, but basically what I did, if I would leave through Sweden, there was a high chance of me getting screwed over. So I checked the country that has the least chance of checking your visa, the amount of days you were in the country. So I left through Spain and luckily I wasn't checked and I just got out and I didn't get the ban from visiting Europe again. This is like one of the really bad experiences with an AP, probably the biggest one that got me re really depressed. I mean, and the second part was probably not only me, but a lot of people. I, w I wasn't receiving the money from them for a while, so they were owing me like 5,000 euro or something like that. And basically, I went in social media with that, and they paid me, I think, in like a couple of weeks. Pretty soon after I went into social media. But before that, I was asking them literally almost every day, what about money? And they were sending me to talk to different people, and then they were suddenly like disappearing, not answering. We also spoke with Hanskin, a member of NIP's Dota 2 team in 2015, who remembers something in his contract really similar to what Fafleren and Freeze had to deal with. First of all, like I, I always got a, the impression that we were being taken care of and they really cared for us, but everything seemed a little bit not so organized. So I hope like they all read the contract negotiations. A lot of things would the uh, NDAs of their contracts we, before when we were talking about the contracts. There would be slips. The expiration I date. remember we were supposed to sign for a year and then we when we arrived with the press contracts and everything said two years. I wish I had the contract right in front of me, but I don't. What I do remember was from the Richard Lewis and Fifth Lauren podcast, where they mentioned the ridiculous, what do you call it, the, the penalties or the fines. I remember clearly that we had the same numbers, 20,000 euros as the penalty for, you know, whatever penalties they had in their contract. And our salaries were nothing close to that. So <laughs> I don't think every, anyone was ever fined for that amount of money, but it was still there, so. Their contracts were five years day, ago. We've spoken with sources more recently associated with NIP yeah, who've expressed their own frustrations They can put whatever the number they want in there. They can okay, put so 10 years if they want. where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with a ton of questions, more interviews that we're currently doing, and more research that we still need to comb through. But one thing is for certain. This story is scammers? not over, what? and we will have more information no, for you I'm soon. I'm defending them so they don't get in trouble. All right, y'all. This is where things get a little weird. People need to read their NDAs. Give me a little more spice. All right, fuckers. All right, folks. All right, peoples. All right, ladies and germs. This is where things get a little weird. We're not gonna. No. I don't get it though. Folks. I'll do. It. Do you want me to do it one more time for you? So they win every single tournament. 2013. Uh, at the end of the year, the management says, "Hey, your money's gone. We're not gonna pay you." Uh, and then a new management takes over the co the NIP company. But if it's the same company, debt is transferred over to new management, no matter what. So if the players have an invoice to the company, then they should get paid with a new management regardless. If the management loses the money, it's their problem. This is such an easy court case. Not if they dissolve the company, but it looks like they didn't dissolve the company, right? They didn't dissolve the company. It's it's the the same NIP company. Or did they dissolve it? Maybe they did dissolve it. I don't know. It looked like they didn't. Welcome to Uganda. Oh, they did create a new company. Oh, okay, okay. Welcome to Uganda. Huh. They did create a new company day after closing first nip. Oh, wow. The day after. And it sucks. I've heard countless of stories, people be getting butt fucked in, in esports. Contracts. 
people not reading their fucking contracts properly because they're fucking they're they're young right did i get fucked over uh No, I've never, I've never not gotten what I've been promised in that sense. I never not gotten what I've been promised. Sometimes there's been delays, uh, but I, I, I'm a lazy motherfucker myself, so it, 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 it's also because of me, right? But um, I've never not gotten what I've been promised. I make sure I read contracts thoroughly. And a lot of people have asked me about stuff in esports regarding deals and stuff. But uh, just uh, don't do anything hasty. Don't do anything hasty and you're fine. Did you not get some kind of trophy from PUBG tournament? Oh, true. I was supposed to get... What was I supposed to get? Some... Uh, some metal? Some gold metal? Oh yeah, I never got that shit, actually. <laughs> I never got that shit. You're right. But uh, I don't... Like, those things are just minor stuff like Welcome I, don't, to Uganda. I don't care maybe i didn't reply to some email or something i don't know i don't know i, I don't want to point it out I point them out or something i don't know if, if it was my fault or not i have quite a bunch of unread ones happens happens kelly high life thank you for four years man 